here is my Tektronix P6042 current probe, a DC to 50 megahertz probe. I bought it some years ago at a local auction. When I got it home, fired it up, didn't work. So I put it to one side because I had no pressing need to use it at that stage. And then a couple of times I pulled it out and had a look at it. Apart from seeing that the power supplies were working all right, I wasn't able to get anything out of it and time pressure and whatever, I just put it aside again. Recently, though, I had two consulting jobs have just come along. One to do with some power electronics and another one to do with some higher frequency current pulses that... I need to measure and I've had some incentive to revisit this and see whether I can get it working. So I pulled it out and I hooked it up to the crow so that I could see the output from it and I was surprised that I actually managed to get a, a signal out of the probe and here's the probe here and it, and, and it actually worked for a little while and then I started just having a look at the cable here and this this cable uh, the piece at the time was quite kinked and I just happened to move it and bingo everything stopped working so I thought oh obviously we've got a, a cable break and it wasn't until a bit bit later when I was doing some Google searches I found a couple of people had had a few blogs where they'd showed pictures of their restoration of, of one of these units and in both cases they'd had a cable break around about here on, on the cable and I, I must admit I, I read this after I'd actually repaired the cable so what I did was I assumed just at a guess that because of the kinking here that there was a break in the cable about this point. So what I did was I removed the terminations of the wires here, took the P-clips off, pulled the cable out, and then just slowly started cutting the outer sheath and the braided insulation off. And just then I'd do about an inch or two of removal of the outer and then I'd do a pull test on some of these wires to see if any would, would break away and when I got around to about here which is about I think it works out at about 20 centimetres about 8 inches or so along the cable about 3 of these wires because there's, there's actually 5 individual wires in here plus two coaxial cables and three of the f the five ordinary wires just broke away they uh, they just totally broken off so i re-terminated everything cut it cut everything back re-terminated and it worked once i powered the unit up and verified a few things it looked like it was pretty close to being in calibration and so i ran the full calibration procedure on it and got it working and it was fine and you know no problem so I was just about ready to start using it for one of the customers jobs originally I wasn't going to make a video about this unit because of the fact that it just had a cable fault and I found the fault and I thought it'd be a trivial video nothing really worth posting online I didn't really start videoing this unit until things started to get interesting. So I was just about ready to start using it for one of the customer's jobs. Particular job, they had to come up and bring the equipment. It's quite a large piece of equipment. And I thought, as an initial step, we'll just monitor the current going into this equipment just as a a quick test to see that everything's working and I was getting some anomalous results so I was I was quite surprised at that and then I, I noticed a couple of things one 
on here we've got a DC output level control and this DC output level is basically the the DC position on the crow because the output goes into a crow and this will set your DC position on the crow and there's only a, a set range and, and depending on the range you're on the DC offset will will actually change so you have to adjust that so that you're within range and, and can get suitable dynamic range out of the unit anyway this wasn't changing the output at all and then also I noticed that with this unit what we've got is you, you unlock the probe to actually get put your wire in and then you actually physically lock it again in the unlocked condition this light here on the front panel comes on to let you know that the probe's unlocked and therefore it's not going to measure correctly so I also noticed that this light wasn't coming on and I immediately assumed wrongly that once again there was a, a cable fault because the cable had already failed and because I'd already tested the whole system out had gone through a complete alignment calibration procedure whatever power supply verification I just assumed that the cable was at fault I decided then to actually pull the cable out again and see if I could find the fault yet again it wasn't until I'd actually completely removed the cable and I thought just before I go ahead and do anything else I'll just check the continuity of these cables or these wires and did that and found that none of them were faulty I was going to check some continuity on this cable because the cable is I was pretty sure it was dead so we've got this one here so that was all right oh, okay maybe we maybe I'll, maybe it was that but I I'd rather be sure because this being intermittent I might be Here we go. Yellow wire. Oh. No. So maybe, maybe we've got no problem with the cabling. One really good thing about this old Tektronix gear is that all the transistors in the unit are socketed so it's quite a simple exercise to unplug the transistors in the negative regulator circuit and individually test them on a curve tracer and that way it was quite a, a simple way of finding that the 2N 
3904 was the faulty transistor. As Q175 had failed, it meant that it was not now driving the base of Q77, the pass transistor, which would have meant that there was full rectified voltage across the transistor and that would then make the minus 16 volt rail have an output that was very small and in fact brought the minus 16 volt rail close to ground which is what happened it was within a volt of ground. This Q175 is a 2N3904 and I just quickly substituted a BC547 which had a bit more gain than the 2N3904. Within about five seconds of powering the unit up, the mains fuse blew. I was concerned that for the five seconds or so that we had actually turned the Q177, had turned that on fully, and we might have had as much as minus 32 volts on the 16 volt rail. Not wanting to potentially do any more damage, I decided to disconnect as much as I could of the regulators and then run the whole unit on a bench power supply to determine whether or not we could actually see whether the unit still worked. So, and here we have the current probe set up with this bench power supply HP supply which has a really noisy fan in it and if I just switch on both rails uh, we can now we can adjust the DC level which is good And that was one of the main issues that we were having before that without the negative 16 volt supply working it was not giving us any adjustment on the DC level and if I take the probe out of its holder and should be able to unlock it and you can see the the lights come on on the unlock and that was another symptom that I had which initially made me think that I just had a another cable fault on this so the next thing is to actually put a, a signal into the probe and just see if I can make a measurement and here I have a 50 ohm terminator line and I'm measuring the current in that line I haven't actually done any measurements to verify the calibration since the issue with the power supply we're getting an output and that's a one kilohertz signal and in fact if I go over here and change the frequency to say uh, two kilohertz but yes, so it appears like the probe circuitry hasn't suffered from power supply failure, but we'll verify that in a calibration once I've repaired the power supply. Okay, here is uh, the uh, repaired probe amplifier. The only thing that was wrong with it was a 2N3904 transistor that had just failed and as you can see we've got minus 16 volts coming out of the regulator once again and if we change over to the I haven't adjusted the the plus 16 volt yet but it's oh this thing's warming up now and it's pretty much on spot on plus 16 volts so yeah supplies are working again and now we're just about ready to do a final calibration check to make sure that nothing has changed so here's my current probe under test we're just 
got a a 50 ohm uh, terminated line here from the signal generator with a loop of wire for the probe and putting the known voltage across the 50 ohm load we can also work out what the, the current should be consequently we can calibrate the probe reasonably well the probe is only guaranteed for sort of plus and minus three percent accuracy we've been able to get it a little bit better than that so currently we've got this probe set up on the 10 milliamp range and we're measuring a 20 milliamp square wave so it's reasonably well in calibration i'm quite pleased so i haven't really had to do much adjustment to it after the issues with the power supply i uh, didn't expect to but you always should check after any failures like that to make sure that the calibration is still okay and really the point of this whole video is not so much th about the probe itself i mean i have shown you a little bit of the internals and whatever but the main point of the video is whenever you're diagnosing a fault don't ever jump to conclusions particularly if you have already had a failure and the evidence sort of points toward the same failure having occurred which in this case was the cable but what you should do is always go back and do all your fundamental checks first because it can save you a lot of time